This video is to show you how to open up a Newtone IM4006 Master Station and remove the cassette player assembly so it can be serviced or repaired. While this task is relatively straightforward, I wouldn't categorize it as simple. So here's the cautionary part. If you're not the type of person who regularly does this type of task, put the screwdriver down now and step away. These cassette assemblies are no longer available. And we have a very limited number of repair parts available for them. It's also possible that by removing it, if you make a mistake, you can cause bigger damage with your 4006 master station. So it's important to know your limitations. If you're not sure, if you're not comfortable, if you're uncertain about doing something like this, it's a good indication that you should stop and not do it. So you'll need just a couple tools to do this task. You need a Phillips screwdriver. This is an ordinary Phillips screwdriver. However, I have magnetized it, uh, which is a important and necessary thing when doing this task. You can either buy a pre-magnetized Phillips screwdriver or you can purchase one of these little magnetizing devices at your local hardware store which will temporarily magnetize all sorts of screwdrivers and other metal tools. But having a magnetized Phillips screwdriver is required to do this. You'll also need a small pair of wire covers. The number one reason that the cassette player will need to be serviced is because the belts inside of it have broken. As I wrote about in a previous article on the website, cassette players have what are, is called mechanical logic. The moving parts inside the cassette assembly have to be in their proper position to allow the different keys or buttons to cause the correct functions to happen. When the belts break, the internal parts of the cassette player stop turning and oftentimes they don't come to rest in the proper position and either A, the cassette player motor won't shut off and it will run continuously, which you can actually hear if you listen, and also the stop button obviously won't work because the internal components are in the wrong position for it to work and since it won't stop it also won't eject and eject really means that the door will pop open. What many people do at that point because the cassette is stuck inside they can't get the door to open they don't know what to do they'll take a screwdriver or usually a kitchen knife and they'll wedge it in behind the door and pry it open don't do this. It will damage or break the latch on the inside of the cassette assembly and then instead of the door not being able to be open you won't be able to lock it closed and it'll stay open all the time. So here on my mock-up is a standard IM4006 apparently is in pretty good condition because the door will open. But for the sake of this demonstration, we're going to pretend that it doesn't open because that's the more common scenario. So the very first step will be to remove the screws that hold the faceplate to the wall, which I've already done, and tilt the master station down. This gives you access to the back of the unit. You should take the support strap and hook it into the slot on the top of the rough end to give it some added support. So let's look at the back of the unit for a second before we get into more detail. The cassette assembly, surprisingly enough, the door for it is here underneath and the cassette assembly is immediately behind the door on the back of the faceplate. So here's a bird's eye view of the back of a 4006 master station and this is the cassette assembly. It's easy to tell what it is because on the back of it is this round circular metal can. This is the motor that drives the cassette assembly. To remove this, the first thing you should do is let's get some of these extraneous wires out of the way. We'll unplug the antenna and put it out of the way. These are the wires and cables that come from the display transformer which are mounted up inside the top of the wall housing. These simply unplug 
These can go back in the wall. These can be moved out of the way. Now you have a much clearer view of the cassette assembly. This shiny metal shield covers up one of the pulleys where one of the belts is located. If you recall, I mentioned that we're going to pretend that this cassette assembly has a door that will no longer open. So I'm going to show you how to pop open the door from the back side without breaking the latch or any of the other parts. So here's the cassette assembly from the side. You can see the motor here. Here's the white plastic. This is the soft open assembly for the cassette player door. Here's the shiny metal shield that has the pulley and the belt under it. And what we're looking for is down on the side of the unit. So here, this black area, this is the side of the body of the cassette player. And down below, what's really hard to see is a slot. This is the area between the body and the part of the door that opens up. To make this easier to see, I've added this piece of green masking tape to the side of the body of the cassette player and I drew this arrow on it. Why is there an arrow? The arrow points down towards the slotted area and inside the slotted area where the arrow is pointing is the latch. If you use a small screwdriver you can put it into the slot and push it up slightly and the cassette player door just opened. Let's take a look. And here we have an open door. If I close it again, we'll fold the set back down and repeat small screwdriver down the bot side of the body of the cassette player into the slot where the arrow is pointing, moving it forward and the door opened. You might have been able to see that the soft open plunger, this part of the white assembly, moved down as the door popped open. Now the door is open. This is the proper way to open the door. For the dem purposes of this demonstration, I put the master station back in its upright position and you can see that the cassette player door is open. The cassette player door is made up of two parts. You have the outer decorative part with the clear door that allows you to, or the clear window that allows you to see the cassette tape, and the inner door, which is the part that's attached to the remaining mechanism inside the faceplate. To remove the cassette player assembly from the faceplate, this outer door has to be taken off. It's held in place with four little tabs, one here, one here, and two that match on the other side, and these have to be pulled and unsnapped to allow the door to come off. So you have to very carefully use your fingers and pull them forward or outward. Sometimes it's hard to do because the plastic gets brittle as it gets older, and if you're careful, the door assembly comes off. So here you can see the, the plastic tabs on the back, one, two, three, four. I will caution you, the plastic that the door assembly is made out of gets brittle over time, and if you bend these tabs back too far, and you're too aggressive with bending them, you will snap them off. Okay? These doors are not available any longer, so caution is the key word on doing something like this. If you're if you rush and you do it poorly, you'll break it and you'll create more problems for yourself than what you started with originally. Now we can see the inner door assembly. It's the part that's spring-loaded that the cassette tape actually fits into. Here's one of my shop cassettes. It fits when you, when the, when you use the cassette player, you put it in the inner door and it closes and it's ready to go. We'll open it up again, since this one's not broken. We'll take the cassette out. If you have a player that the door will remain closed, you can close it again. It, the inner door being closed doesn't interfere with removing the cassette assembly from the back of the faceplate. If your latch is broken and the door won't remain closed, that's all right also. You just have to be more careful at, when it comes time to lift the assembly out of the faceplate so you don't damage the door.
Now that it's now that we have the outer cassette door removed, it's time to remove the cassette assembly. The first thing we need to do is disconnect some of the wires or cables from the cassette player itself. First, you'll find this small group of cables that cross over the back of the cassette player assembly. Usually, these cables are held together with a small nylon wire tie. This is where your cutters come in handy. Snip the wire tie and remove it. Please be careful that when you're cutting the wire tie, you don't accidentally cut the cables. Um, if you do, that creates a real problem later on. N difficult to fix. These assemblies, not, not easy to replace, so don't cut the cables. Care is the key word. Once you've taken the wire tie off, you'll see that there's a small red and white pair of wires with a small connector. This unplugs. This is actually the power that, that runs the cassette assembly. Next to it is a wider brown plug that has six individual wires in it in this harness. This also unplugs. This is the control line cable. Uh, it tells the cassette player what to do. And finally, there's this two lead cable. There is a brown cable and a gray cable. These come from the tuner board. They cross over the back of the cassette assembly and sort of disappear down into here. This is the display board. Here I've zoomed in on the brown and gray cable that comes from the tuner board, the one that crosses over the back of the cassette assembly, and if you follow the screwdriver down, you'll see where it terminates into another brown plug. This has to be unplugged, otherwise you won't be able to lift the cassette assembly out of the faceplate. So, you carefully reach down in here with your fingers, give it a little wiggle, and it will unplug. Once you have the brown and gray cable unplugged from the display assembly, simply tuck it underneath the, tu the tuner board just to keep it out of the way. Now, your cassette assembly is held to the back of the faceplate with four screws. There's one in each corner. There's one here. This is lower right. There's one here. This is upper right. These are the easy ones to see because they're out in the open. There are matching screws in the lower left and the upper left. These are a little trickier. You can actually see them, but you're sort of working around other things that are in the way. Uh, so it makes it a little more challenging to get the screws out. If you can't see real well, here I'm on the workbench where I have really good lighting. Uh, if you don't have really good lighting when you're trying to do this, use a flashlight. You need to see what you're doing. All right, let's get ready to take the mounting screws out of the cassette assembly so we can lift it out of the faceplate. Taking my own advice, I have a small flashlight here so you can see or hopefully see the first mounting screw. This is the lower left hand screw and if you follow the flashlight down where the brightest part of the light is, the screw is right here. It's difficult to see on camera. Hopefully you'll be able to see it better when you do this yourself. Having the flashlight helps a whole lot. This is where the magnetized Phillips screwdriver comes into play. Since you're working down inside the set, you need a way to extract the screw once you've loosened it without dropping it down into the innards of the intercom. Since the screws are metal, if it were to fall into one of the circuit boards, it can cause a short circuit and you can damage your intercom. So the importance of the magnetized screwdriver is very high. So with your magnetized screwdriver, place it on the screw, carefully unscrew it, it's not very long, and lift the screw out. You can see how important this is. If I were to drop this down into 
the main intercom board down here or even possibly in the onto the tuner board it can cause a short circuit and damage the intercom less than that you could simply drop it down into the cavity here somewhere and you may never get it out and then you won't have a screw to put back in the hole to hold the cassette player in place so there's the first one now we'll do the top left again I have my flashlight it's shining on the screw head which is right down here again take your magnetized Phillips screwdriver you'll need to put it between these two RCA connectors it'll be at a slight, a slight angle but you should be able to unscrew it once it's loosed again carefully lift it out without knocking it off and dropping it inside the set. Now that we've removed the two difficult screws, now we'll do the two easy ones. The top right hand corner is easily removed. It's very exposed, so just lift it out. And the bottom right hand corner is down here, just off the corner of this shiny metal shield. Remove that one and take the screw out. Now that we've removed the four screws, the cassette assembly is just sitting in the back of the faceplate. We'll move these grounding wires out of the way just to give us a little more clearance. Grab it by the motor, lift it up, wiggle it around any obstructions, and there you have it, your removed cassette player assembly. Now that we've taken the cassette assembly out of the faceplate, let's talk about the 4006 cassette assembly. This assembly is constructed of 129 individual parts. And that's not counting the components on the power supply, motor control, and preamp board. That's just the cassette mechanism itself. Out of those 129 parts, there are exactly two parts that you can still buy new. One are replacement motors, and the second are belts. That's it. Nothing else is available. These assemblies are not available from Newtone. So what typically goes wrong with these? Well, primary, the first biggest problem are belts. So let's look at the belts for a second. Under this shiny metal cover, which will remove this tiny screw is the main pulley. This pulley is connected with a belt to the small pulley on the motor and there's another belt which runs under this area which drives other parts of the deck. So what problems do the belts cause? As I said earlier Mechanical assemblies like this cassette deck have what is called mechanical logic. Certain mechanical parts have to be in the correct position for the buttons to work correctly. When the belts break, the mechanical parts are not in the correct position and the buttons don't work properly. Therefore, sometimes the motors run continuously, you're not able to open the door. The other thing that happens to these is when the belts break, they often will wrap around the small pulley that's connected to the motor. And since the motor continues to run, it'll wrap the belt around itself tighter and tighter until eventually there's enough resistance that the motor will stop. Now the motor hasn't shut off, it still has power supply to it and it wants to spin, but it can't because the belt won't let it. What happens in those cases, if it's left that way for a long time, is this part of the board, which is what regulates the power to the motor, this component will overheat, it will often melt this connector, just as an aside. If you remember, we put the green tape with the arrow to put the screwdriver in the slot and open the door. This is the latch that holds the door closed. This is the part everyone breaks off when they pry the door open with a kitchen knife. So don't do that. 
reinstalling the cassette deck is exactly the opposite order of taking it out.